Hi, I'm Ben Fuda, host of PBS Wisconsin's online gardening series, Let's Grow Stuff. Welcome to this year's virtual Wisconsin Garden and Landscape Expo. I hope you'll enjoy this special educational presentation, and remember, you can leave your questions for our presenter at any time by typing them into the chat, and we'll ask them in a live Q&A at the end of the session. Also, don't forget to stick around and check out everything this virtual event has to offer. From inspiring garden tours to an interactive exhibitor mall, there's something for everyone. And thanks for joining us. Now, please enjoy the show. I am an assistant professor and state extension specialist working on irrigation, nitrogen, and storage management of potatoes and vegetable crops at the Department of Horticulture, UW-Madison. Today is my pleasure to share this presentation with you, and we will talk about how to grow yummy potatoes in your home gardens. Firstly, let's talk about the value of potatoes. Potatoes are the most important non-cereal crop in the world, and they are the most consumed vegetables uh, in the United States. They produce substantially more calories per acre than corn, wheat, rice, or soybean, those cereal crops, and they offer the consumers a great range of complex carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, and phytonutrients. A five ounce potato will supply nearly half of an uh, average adult's daily requirement for vitamin C, which is a powerful antioxidant. And we believe that potatoes will play an important role in providing the food security for the world in upcoming decades. This paragraph shows you the structure of a potato plant um, that for uh, a commercial production. We have to remember that potatoes uh, grow from mother tubers, not from true seeds. I divide the structure of a potato plant between above ground and underground. Below the ground, the mother tuber will develop uh, into sprouts that will then grow into the stems with leaves flowers and uh, fruits. The fruits will contain the true seeds that are very tiny in size. A potato fruit can contain thousands of true seeds. However, these true seeds are only for breeding purposes, or in other words, they're only uh, used for research purpose. They're not used for commercial production. A mother tuber is, uh, looks like this. They have different eyes. Each eye will develop into a sprout, which then grows into a stem. Below the ground, the mother tuber will develop the rooting system that uptake nutrients and water from the soil. And also the mother tuber will grow some stolen, which is a specialized underground stem, the, the tip of which will bulk into potato tubers. And the tubers are what we eat. Uh, in the United States, Idaho always ranks the number first uh, with regards to its potato production. In the 2019 crop year, Idaho produced 6.5 billion tons of potatoes. Second place is the state of Washington. They produced 5.2 million tons of tubers. Wisconsin, surprisingly, is a number three in the country for its production of potatoes uh, with 1.4 million tons. Oregon and Michigan are number four and number five. So we're very proud to be the number three uh, with regards to potato production in our country. Wisconsin is famous for producing the premium quality of many different types of potatoes, including russets, round whites, reds, yellows, purples, and other specialty varieties. If we divide the Wisconsin potatoes by the way we consume them, we have french fry potatoes, chipping potatoes, and fresh table stock potatoes, including boiling, mash, and salad. So we have a diversity of potato type uh, for our production, potato production in Wisconsin. 
Today's presentation, I will talk about how to grow potatoes in the backyard from five different perspectives. Soil pH and fertility testing, selecting the seed tubers, planting practices, how to keep the pl uh, potato plant healthy during the growing season, and harvesting and storage. Firstly, we need to consider the soil pH and fertility testing before uh, planting the potatoes. As you prepare, plant, and tend, uh, tend your garden, please treat your potato area differently because the potato plants require more intense management of fertilizer compared to the other vegetable crops. Usually, potatoes will grow best in the well-drained, coarse-textured, sandy soil. A poorly drained clay soil is more likely to produce diseased or misshaped potato tubers. The ideal soil pH level for potatoes is mildly acidic between 6 and 6.5. However, potatoes can tolerate soil pH as low as 5. If you have soil, uh, soil pH lower than 5, please add some lime to neutralize the soil. Alkaline soils will likely to produce uh, potatoes with uh, scab issues, as shown in this picture. And you should get your soil tested before planting. This slide uh, lists the website address and some information of the UW Soil and Forage Laboratory. I also listed the contact and location information in this slide. Uh, you can go to this website and look for the submission form and how to ship your soil samples to the, uh, the soil and forage lab to test your soil samples. About four weeks after planting, uh, when you heal up the soil around the plants, you can uh, apply a balanced fertilizer at a rate of about one pound per 10 feet of row. Repeat the healing and fertilization one week later, so you totally have two times of healings. However, always remember to not over apply nitrogen and fertilizer because it could be toxic uh, to the young, young plants of the potatoes. Do not use any fertilizer containing a weed killer, aka weed and feed, because it may kill your vegetable plants. Typically, manure is not recommended on potatoes in home gardens because it tends to encourage scab issues. Save the manu uh, manure for other garden crops. Calcium, magnesium, sulfate, and micronutrients can only be added when indicated by soil testing. And this means that uh, having your soil tested is really important for growing healthy potatoes. After you receive the soil uh, testing results, uh, what you should do is to select the seed tubers. Buying disease-free seed tubers from a certified grower or seed distributor is always critical. Whole, uh, most of the home gardens will carry the seed tubers in the spring, or you can purchase them online. And I show an example of an online purchase in this picture. Um, and this purchase is to uh, buy some specialty varieties uh, for the seed tubers. Commercial seed tubers will grow into stronger, more vigorous, and longer-lived plants with high yield potential and good tuber quality at harvest. Do not plant potatoes that you purchase from the grocery store because those tubers have been applied with the a uh, sprout inhibitor CIPC to keep them dormant, in which case the CIPC will uh, slow down the emerging of the new plants and uh, most likely the seed tubers will decay in the soil. Uh, also do not use the grocery store potatoes and your own saved tubers from the garden is only for eating, they're not for seed potatoes. Here I list some common potato varieties that the home gardeners can choose from. We have some common russet, uh, russet varieties such as the russet Burbank or russet Norcota. Uh, we have the you can go here, which is a yellow variety with very early maturity and moderate yield. 
They are good for boiling, baking, and frying. We have this dark red northern, a red variety with uh, early maturity and a, a moderate field, uh, yield. They are primarily used for salads and for boiling. We also have purple and blue varieties. They are late mature with medium yield potential. They're naturally resistant to many different diseases. They have blue skin and deep blue flesh uh, that have very high content in uh, antioxidants, making them extra nutritious. We also have the fingerings and marbles that have flesh ranging from pale yellow to deep purple uh, flavors from nutty to buttery and texture from waxy to smooth. Um, so our home gardeners, depending on your preference, uh, you have a lot of different options. Here I uh, list a website of the Wisconsin Potato and Vegetable Growers Association. Uh, this webpage lists some common varieties uh, that I just talked about. So after we get our soil testing back, uh, we know what varieties we want to choose, then we need to get ready for planting. The first step of planting is to cut the seed tubers. If the seed tubers are small, intact, and having a diameter between 1 and 1.25 inches, they're good for planting immediately. If we get larger tubers that are larger than this size, 1 to 1.25 inches in diameter, we need to cut them into pieces. Each piece should be less than 1 and, uh, one and a quarter inch. Every piece must at least have one eye, and I, I touched on that before. An eye is an indentation that will produce a sprout. Two or three eyes per seed piece is better. Use a clean knife on a clean cutting board when you cut the seeds into pieces, sanitize the knife between different varieties, and discard the problematic pieces right away. After cutting, Place the, the pieces on the tray at room temperature between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit for at least five days until the cut surface has dried out and form protective tough layer. Don't worry about rubbing off the sprouts while planting because the sprouts can easily regrow. The picture on the left side shows a good example of or well uh, protected seed piece. They have this firmly tough surface after we put them in room temperature uh, for five days or, uh, or longer. And these are some bad examples of seed pieces with disease issues. This is dry rot, white mold, pink rot, and pethium leak. When you're cutting the seed pieces and you see those problems, remove those potato pieces right away. Um, after the, the soil temperature warms above 45 degrees Fahrenheit, the planting can be done. Typically in Wisconsin, mid-April is the start of the planting for potatoes. Gardeners in southern Wisconsin may plant earlier than mid-April, as early as April 1st. Um, and the locations up north can, um, may, may have to wait longer. Make a furrow four to six inches deep when you're uh, ready for planting. And plant the seed in the furrow and cover with two inches of soil on the top. You have to plant seed pieces eight to 12 inches apart to make sure there is enough space between each plant. And the row spacing can be between 30 inches and 36 inches. Once the green shoots emerge, you're ready to heal up the soil along the plants. And the purpose of healing is to help the stolen to grow longer. And I have mentioned before that a stolen is an under, uh, underground specialized stem that will bulk into tubers. The practice of healing will make sure there is enough soil covering the tubers after the heavy rainfall. And healing can also make sure that any shallow tubers can be protected from the exposure to sunlight and turning green. This picture shows some uh, green colored tubers. The green color is an accumulation of chlorophyll and some other toxic compound 
that can cause food poisoning. Start healing the plants when stems are about six inches tall and one more time after a week. So in total, you will have healed six to eight, uh, six to eight inches of soil. During the growing season, watering is a very important uh, practice for making sure the health of the plant is good. During the bulking of the tubers, water stress can cause some uh, misshape uh, tubers, which is shown in this picture, or some hollow heart issues shown here. Also, the water stress can prevent the plants from producing good yield. If you have light textured soil or sandy soil, this soil type is good for growing some large size and smooth appearance of tubers. However, this type of soil is very susceptible to drought stress um, and they can affect the tuber growth. A rule of thumb is that you need to always keep the top 10 inches of the soil wet. If you have sandy soil, one inch of water will wet the top 10 inches and if you have heavy clay soil, one inch of water will only wet the top six inches. If your soil is sandy, uh, make sure you water the, 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 the plants every other day during the hot and uh, dry season. You should adjust the irrigation accordingly based on the rainfall uh, forecasting. Make sure you're not overwatering the soil because that will cause some disease issues. Use a trowel to see how far down the soil is wet. Uh, if only the top two inches is wet, you should water more. Um, another good practice for growing good potatoes is to control the weeds. A frequent shallow cultivation with a hoe or other tools will be enough to kill the weeds uh, before they become a big challenge. Do not cultivate too, too deeply. Uh, just deep enough to cut off the weeds from the surface of the soil. After cultivation, heal up the soil around the plants. If you have more questions, reach out to our knowledgeable extension weed specialist, Dr. Jet Cahoon, for, uh, for more information. Also, controlling the insects is good practice for the health of potato plant. Colorado potato beetle is a common potato pest. The beetles can easily overwinter in the soil and appear again in the next spring. So you should regularly check on the plants for orange eggs of the, uh, of the beetles. They will be on the undersides of the leaves. If you find some adults or orange larvae, hand picking will be enough. You should drop the adults and larvae in a pail filled with soapy water. More questions, please refer to our extension insect specialist, Dr. Russ Groves. Controlling the disease is also a critical practice for uh, growing potatoes in your home gardens. Use good cultural control practices can uh, help you to reduce the disease pressure to a good level, and that will allow for a successful harvest. However, some soil-borne diseases can cause crop failure, and once the disease spores are in the garden, it's gonna be difficult to get rid of them. So another kind reminder, always use certified disease-free uh, seed potatoes. The potato scab is a bacterial disease that can cause dark, rough, quirky spots on the skin of the potato tubers that can affect the appearance, but um, they will be still good for eating. Early blight and late blight are some fungal disease common to the Wisconsin potatoes, uh, and they sometimes can be serious problems. If you, particularly if you find late blight in your home garden, you have to remove them right away because they can cause some further spread, uh, and that will be very serious. Uh, late blight and early blight can cause leaf spots and lesions on potato tubers. Another common fungal disease is it's called verisilium wilt. Uh, the symptom of verisilium wilt is yellowing and wilting uh, in the potato plants, usually uh, in, a, in the leaves. Practice crop rotation is going to be a good practice. 
you have to choose a good location in your garden where you have not grown potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, eggplants for the past three or four years because those plants all belong to the Solanaceae family and they share the same problem of diseases. You have to wait at least three years before you go back to the same spot. Um, more questions, please reach out to our extension potato pathology specialist, Dr. Amanda Gavins. So assuming that we have control the weeds, the insects, the diseases, we have watered the potato plants really well, everything is under control, we should be expecting a good harvest. The young potatoes can be dug when, uh, even when their skin is still tender. Uh, however, uh, if you dig those young potatoes, they may have some skinning problems, uh, which are shown in this picture. On the, on, the, on the tubers, many of the areas have no skin. So these tubers are more susceptible to disease entry uh, and they're, they're good for immediate consumption. They're not good for storage. You can dig new potatoes about seven to eight weeks after planting. Um, when, planting uh, when harvesting, dig down about a foot to pick the tubers. Uh, some home gardeners will dig beside the plants and just take a few potatoes out, but they will leave the plants still in the place to produce more tubers. Uh, harvest mature tubers after the plants have dried out uh, before forested, uh, frosting. If the uh, you know drying out of the plants are not achievable, cut off the vines uh, above the ground at least seven days before harvest. Uh, usually 14 to 21 days is good. Choose a dry and cool day to dig the tubers. Uh, the day is it should have day, uh, daily high temperature no higher than 70 degrees Fahrenheit. You can use a spading fork, but be careful. Uh, try not to punch the tubers with the fork tips. If you do end up cutting into potatoes as you harvest them, sort out those damaged tubers, um, and you should eat those damaged tubers first. Store the good tubers for storage. If you want to store some potatoes for longer consumption, uh, you should choose the varieties that are good for storage. So make sure to check on the information before you plant them. Gently bl uh, brush any dirt off uh, of the, the, the tubers, but do not wash them because washing will cause some disease problems during storage. The potato skins should be difficult to rub off with your thumb. Uh, if you can achieve that, that means that the, the potato tubers are mature enough for good long-term storage. If this is not achievable, place the harvested tubers in a cool, dark, and well-ventilated area to allow the wounds to heal, which will take about a week or two weeks. Um, after this period, you can check on the potatoes, remove any potatoes that are soft, decaying, or rotting. The ideal storage conditions for potatoes is 38 degrees Fahrenheit with at least 95% humidity in the dark. If this condition is not available, a cool, damp basement will be good enough. Before eating the tubers, remove any sprouts because the sprouts can uh, contain some compounds that are toxic. Usually, the longer the, uh, you store the potatoes in your home storage, the more likely they will develop uh, the sprouts. Also, before cooking the potatoes, remove any green areas and uh, uh, because those green areas will contain some toxic compounds that can cause some food poisoning issues. So um, I just talk about some uh, tips for growing healthy potatoes in your home gardens. Uh, and to wrap up, I list some key tips here in this slide. 
Uh, number one, as you prepare your garden, treat your potato area differently because potatoes usually require more fertilization than other vegetable crops. Buy the disease-free seed tubers from a certified grower or seed distributor because that will ensure you have a healthy growing season. Plant the seed pieces as soon as the soil warms up above 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the green shoots emerge up to six inches tall, plan to heal up the soil along the plants as they grow. Keep the top 10 inches of the soil always wet and you can dig fresh potatoes about seven to eight weeks after planting. However, you may, you may have some uh, skinning problems. So those potatoes or those young potatoes are only good for immediate consumption. If you want to store uh, long-term for the tubers, you need to harvest the mature ones. So you have to wait until the plants have, uh, have completely dried out. Only store healthy tubers and the environment should be cool, damp, and dark. Don't eat potato sprouts or green flesh because they have some toxic compounds that can cause food poisoning problems. Lastly, I'm gonna share you some uh, good resources. I have a YouTube channel called Proud to be a Spot Badger. Um, in this website, I have some short videos showing you some uh, practices of potato production, such as planting, in-season management, and processing uh, some potato chips. So uh, if you're interested, feel free to take a look. And also I have this uh, commercial vegetable production in Wisconsin extension bulletin. And uh, uh, you can free download the, the file as a PDF format from the website, which is listed here, or you can buy a hard copy uh, and it's also available. Thank you, my audience, for participating today. If you have any questions or comments about my talk, I look forward to the discussions with you soon. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ben Fuda, host of Let's Grow Stuff. Well, we just finished learning about growing potatoes in your home garden with E, and unfortunately we have had a few technical difficulties and we haven't been able to connect with her just yet, but rest assured we want to get answers to all of the excellent questions you've been sending in. So we're going to keep trying to connect with her, but in the meantime, uh, we're going to make sure that, again, we get some answers for all of you. And so we're looking forward to, we're, we're collecting all of your questions, so if you still have those, please feel free to leave them in the live stream chat or Facebook Live or YouTube, wherever you may be watching, and we'll post them in a future Let's Grow Stuff blog post at pbswisconsin.org. In the meantime, this is a great opportunity to get up, stretch your legs, check out your winter covered garden, make a spot of tea because we still have more expo coming up just after this. So please stay tuned and we'll be back shortly.